everybody here in the house tonight. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to come and worship God. I'm ready to feel the Holy Ghost move in this house and see something happen. Uh, and I know that's God's will as well. We're going to go ahead and start off. We'll play us some music, if you would. Just do whatever you feel led to do and worship the Lord. Well, I don't know what you came to. I came, I came to praise the Lord, Lord. I, don't I don't know what, what you came, came to do. I came to praise the Lord, I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do. I came to praise the Lord, I don't know what you came to do. I came, I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. But I'm going to praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do. But I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. But I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do. But I came to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Give him what he deserves in this house tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Well, Brother Frederick, it's good to see you. <laughs> it's nice to have him. Let's give him a hand clap. All the way from uh, across the river, right? Mm -hmm. We normally just say that from Bedford to Mitchell, but it's a little farther than that for you. <laughs> Thank you for making the drive. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we do have some stuff coming up here soon. Uh, I think Nick already kind of drove that home this morning, so he, he mentioned it. But if you weren't here, we've got just a few things coming up. we got some revival. Um, I think we're having some BBS this year as well. Thank God that uh, the COVID stuff has settled down and we're able to do some things for the kids of the community. And hopefully we'll be able to have an outbreak and revival in this house. Uh, we're going to sing again. Do whatever you feel led to do. When this life is all I'll find a way to a home God's celestial soul I'll find a way I'll find a way Oh glory I'll find a way
Tell you what, some people are worried about when they get, leave this world, whatever's going to happen, however it's going to happen. But I tell you what, I love my wife, I love my kids, but I cannot wait to meet him in the air and fly away. I'm telling you what, it's going to be a good time, ain't it? Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to go ahead and get ready if we can to take up the offering. Uh, Brother Tanner, I think, Brother Dixon, if you could help us with that and uh like I said, if you feel led to do anything, you know, if you feel led to come to this altar, whatever it is, we want to be in the avenue of the Holy Ghost. And I always pray that God helps me to be sensitive unto his spirit and to do what I feel led to do. Uh, I feel like God can only do certain things. He can do anything, but he, he wants us to follow the Holy Ghost and follow after that for him to do that. Amen. We've seen some pretty amazing things in the time that uh, I've been here. You know, we've seen uh, a lady that doesn't attend here anymore, but her mother come in here, and I feel like that God brought her from death. Yes. Yes. And uh, she stood up, and well, all we did was we prayed that the Holy Ghost would touch her and bless her. And from what it seemed to me, Sister Melissa said, I'm pretty sure she checked her pulse and didn't have one. And uh, we prayed. Her mother, her daughter said, if God... If, if he wants her to pass away, then here's as good a place as any. It was her first time coming here, but God must have felt led to touch her one last time and give her a little more life and a little more chance. And we watched her stand up, hold her daughter's hand, and walk out that door. And uh, so God does give chances, and he does bless and do works, but we have to be able to be willing to do what God wants us to do and to follow after the Holy Ghost. So just do that tonight. Well, ain't God good? He gives us so many blessings undeserving. That's what we are. We ought to thank Him, love and praise Him, and a whole lot more tomorrow. Well, ain't God good? He gives us so many blessings undeserving. That's what we are. We are to thank Him, love and praise Him more today and a whole lot more tomorrow. Thank God, good to give us so many blessings undeserving. That's what we are. We are to thank Him. Love and praise Him a little more today and a whole lot more tomorrow. Thank God good to give us so many blessings undeserving. That's what we are. We are to thank Him. Love and praise Him a little more today and a whole lot more tomorrow. Hallelujah, Jesus. He's so good. He's so good. We could just take a minute. Let's just worship and praise God. Thank him for everything that he's done. It's such a beautiful day. He's gave us such wonderful weather. We're in here in the house of God with people that we love. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for another opportunity, mighty God, to be in your house, Lord. Another chance to feel the Holy Ghost anointing in this place, mighty God. Send revival into this house, Lord. 
Speak breath and life into these people, Lord. Continue, Lord, to send souls into this house, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, mighty God. Bless those that can't be in this house, Lord. Do a work in this place, Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We can affect this community just not within these four walls, but being outside those walls. And every day that we live, every day that we go to work is another day and another chance to have testimony um, just by living life the way that we should live and setting an example that we should set. So let's continue to do the work we know to do, continue to persevere through life's troubles, life's issues, and everything this world has to throw at it because we know in the end who God is going to become the victor. We know God's going to be the victor and that he's going to give us what we need. We're going to sing one more song tonight, and then we're going to have Brother Frederick come preach the word. Well, they'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Oh, really? He's going to be shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills. When we reach that land of which we've heard the story, they'll be shouting on the hills of God. They'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills. When we reach that land of which we heard the story, they'll be shouting on the hills of God. Well, oh, they'll be shouting on the hills of glory. They'll be shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills. When we reach that land of which we heard the story, They'll be shouting on the hills of God. Oh, they'll be shouting on the hills of glory. Shouting on the hills, shouting on the hills. When we reach that land of which we heard the story, they'll be shouting on the hills of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything you do, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, it's a little early yet to, to invite you up, brother. If uh, But if you're ready, I'll give you a few extra minutes. How's that sound? And you can take your time. I don't want to rush uh, the work of God, and I don't want to rush the Holy Ghost. I remember... Uh, I'll talk. I'll tell this real quick before I let this brother come up and preach. Uh, I know I talk a lot, but up here I'm, up here I'm pretty quick. So you guys get lucky. Uh, it's a little different, but anyway, uh, this is kind of just a good memory I have. Okay, of uh, my father when he come here, and uh, you know my my dad didn't live a life that was necessarily of God. I don't feel like most of his life. You know, um, towards the end of him being sick, he. You know, started coming here, and I feel like he, he, uh, you know, really touched God in certain ways. And I, one of the things that he told me well, when he come here, he he was sitting there, and he said, uh, he's like, I don't know, I don't know why everybody's in a hurry to get out of this house. He said everybody's ready to to leave, and everybody's uh, everybody just wants to go do their thing. He goes to this this feeling of God in this house is just, it's so wonderful, and, and it's just, you know, I just can't leave, you know, and, and so, of course, he was used to, um, you know, not, not necessarily having obligations like my mom did of, of raising us, he was gone, and so he was used to being able to take his time and do whatever he wants, I get that, but uh, I think that the theory that he had was really wonderful, because, you know, he, he, he reminded me that, you know, don't don't be in a hurry to get out of the presence of God because we may miss something. And so whenever I'm up here and we're praying with people, I try to tell them without distracting them that uh, we're going to stay here all night. If they need to, if they need prayer all night, um, no matter what it is, we'll stay here all night. Brother Lindell, I know it's not mean to be embarrassed you, but when I was up there, that's what I told you. I said, we'll stay here all night with you, brother. Keep seeking the Holy Ghost. He's going to give it to you in Jesus' name. Anyways, without further ado, we're going to invite Brother Frederick. And uh, thank you so much for coming, brother. Thank you, sir. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Yeah. 
I've already sung this song one time tonight. I'm going to sing it one more time. Now, I'll sing it to you. Yeah. I don't know how um, some of you kids, you're not going to have a clue. You're going to have to be at least 64. That's how old I am. How? It was a joke. It was a joke. There used to be a show on TV, forgive me for referring to television, but there used to be a show on TV called Petticoat Junction. Y'all remember that? You remember how when it would come on, there was a part of that song that would say, and there's Uncle Joe, he's a moving kind of slow at the junction. My name's Tony. I'm not Uncle Joe. Wednesday night, I fell down a flight of stairs. And I, uh, it was at Brother Weir's church. I don't know if y'all know Brother Weir. Uh, in Terre Haute, I was there. Uh, my wife and I, we celebrated uh, 44 years, Thursday. 44 years. I've got long endurance. That's all I can say. I, I've got long endurance. Nevertheless, uh, I I made a little stumble and I went down uh, about ten or twelve stairs uh, steps, broke a rib, uh, twisted. But you know what? I'm good tonight. I am glad to be here. If y'all will tolerate me moving a little slow, like Uncle Joe. We're going to enjoy being here this evening. Amen. I'm not going to sing. I was, I was just acting. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad tonight for the opportunity to be here. Um, I don't know where Brother and Sister Allen, where they are. Louisiana. So you think they're watching tonight? Probably. Or if they're not, they will. Well, there's several things I'm really wanting to say. I think I'll just go ahead and say it. They're in Louisiana. What are they going to do? It ain't like they're going to throw a rock at me. But one more time, one more time of me filling in for him when he's gone, I'm going to make application for associate pastor here. That's that's what I'm going to do. I want to get on the payroll, and I want all the friends' benefits and all that stuff that goes with that position. I trust that wherever they are tonight, whatever they're doing, I trust that they are having a great time. Uh, getting the, Every pastor needs to get away every now and then. And um, I, I love them, have been knowing them for many years, and uh, I'm thankful for their friendship and grateful for their confidence. Uh, it is one thing for a pastor to say, hey, come preach for me, and they're there. But when a pastor is not going to be there and says, hey, come preach for me, uh, that is a tremendous check mark in my box. And I, I appreciate the uh, Allen family so much. And uh, when I say that, I hope they're not watching because I don't want them to know that. But... Um, I've got about a two and a half hour drive, maybe so somewhere in that area, about a two and a half hour drive from home to here. And um, I already had my my notes. I already had everything lined out. I knew what I was going to do, uh, or I thought I knew what I was going to do. After service, I will give you five hundred dollars for that right there. Oh, wait, it's not cold. No, no money. I got out of that pretty quick. Didn't I? All I can tell you tonight, first of all, it looks like you're probably going to, I don't have it. Oh, there's the clock. Uh, oh, man, y'all did give it to me earlier. Didn't you? So if I preach according to that clock, I'm just telling you, you're going to get out early tonight. Maybe. Anytime I tell the folks at home this is going to be a short one, they put the seatbelt on because they know that that's not what's going to happen. But on the way up here, 
again, I'm, I'm nervous, and I'm very seldom nervous when I'm in the pulpit. I love to preach. But on my way up here, the Lord gave me a scripture, and he gave me a thought, and um, I hope that you will help me tonight. If y'all move as slow as I'm moving, it's going to be a long service tonight. So every now and then, somebody better say amen and and while I'm preaching, not, not while I'm doing my introduction. I'd like for you to stand with me this evening to give honor to the reading of the Word of the Lord. And uh, I've got home folks that are watching tonight, or supposed, they're supposed to be watching. Uh, I, I, I want the Lord to help us just for a few minutes. It's not about how long I preach. You know what it's about? It's about us receiving from the Word of God. And if we will receive tonight, even though I'm not real sure where all I'm going, and that makes me really nervous, but uh, I want the Lord to put a little something in us that's going to help us tomorrow. It's going to help us maybe tonight after church. If you will direct your attention to Psalms 59, Psalms 59, and I'm going to start reading in the ninth verse. Psalms 59 and 9, and again, thank you, uh, Brother and Sister Allen, for your confidence. Uh, thank y'all for letting me uh, come, letting me be here. And uh, I did, I, How does that work? Can you be the pastor of one church and the associate pastor of another church? We, we might set a precedence here. Who knows? But in Psalms 59 and 9, because of his strength, will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. Aren't you glad he's your defense? The 10th verse, the God of my mercy shall prevent me. God shall let me see my desire upon mine enemies. I want to go to the beginning of that 10th verse that is to some degree a little bit controversial or, or maybe a bit of a paradox. Um, it says, the God of my mercy shall prevent me. And if the Lord will help me here for a few minutes, I want to preach to you kind of sort of maybe on this line of a God who will prevent me. A God who will prevent me. Let's, let's all pray collectively as a body and ask the Lord to help us here just for a few moments. God, I, I, I'm thankful to be in your house. I'm thankful for your blessings. I'm grateful for all that you have done for us. And I, I pray, God, that your word will find a resting place in our hearts and in our minds that we will be able tonight to understand your word and to glean from the word of God. I pray tonight, Lord, that you will help us in the next few moments. Keep your hands upon us tonight, Lord, and, and honor us with your word and honor us with your presence. We ask these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Turn to your neighbor, shake their hand, and tell them, you sure are looking good. That's going to be hard for some of y'all. It's going to be hard for some of you, but go ahead. We are without a doubt living... You know, we said this a few years ago. A few years ago, we said we're living without a doubt in the end time. We said that and meant it 10 years ago, 5 years ago. With what we see transpiring in the world today based upon the Word of God, we have to admit that now we are living in the end of the end time. I believe, and, and what I believe is not important, but... But I believe that the Lord could come before I get finished with this sermon. I really do believe that. And I also know that in this hour that we are living in, that Satan, he is pulling out all the stops. He's doing everything that he can to hinder. He's doing everything that he can to stop the work of God and the move of God. 
I saw on your board out there a while ago on your sign that that brother and sister Shepherd is coming. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. Yeah. But if 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 Satan has his way, he will do everything he can to put a stop to a move of God and a stop to revival. I would be worried, but I read for myself. I didn't take Brother Allen's word for it. I looked it up for myself that if God be for you, who can be against you? I read for myself. As a matter of fact, I even underlined it in my Bible I, that we are more than conquerors through Him that first loved us. I want you to know today that there really is a devil, uh, amen, but there really is a God. There really is a hell, but there really is a heaven, amen. There really is satanic spirits that's running rampant, but there really is a thing called, I'm feeling pretty good about right now, there really is a baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, and God is always going to be the victor. My desire tonight in these little scribbled notes, thank God for a, for a, a whatever this thing is, an Apple pencil where I can scribble some notes down. I want you to know that if you want to, you can make it. Now, if you don't want to make it, if you're going to be a grumbler, and, and, and is that the camera back there? Okay, I'm going to look at that. If you live in Madisonville, Kentucky, and you want to be a grumbler, go ahead. And the reason why I said that because I know none of you would fall into that category. There's no, there's no grumblers here. There's no complainers. There's none of those folks that's saying, oh, what are we going to do and how are we going to make it? That's, that's, that's south over the river. That's, that's south over the river. If you're one of those, I'm telling you, the Word of God, if you, if you are a chronic complainer, the Word of God is not going to apply to you. If you're one of those guys, one of those people that find fault in everything, this book isn't going to do you any good. But if you will put your faith and trust and hope and confidence in the Lord, there's not a devil, there's not a hell, there's not a circumstance that can stop you from being victorious if you want to. See, this is, this is what happens when I don't have notes. I got a thousand things flooding my mind right now. We'll be here all night if I say them all. But you, 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 there, did you know, not in Indiana, did you know that in Kentucky and every other state of the Union, there's folk that enjoys being sick? Okay, I'm, I'm just going to look down at my notes. I'm not going to look at y'all anymore. We've got folks in Kentucky that will argue over who's the sickest. I had four, I had four gallstones. Yeah, I didn't have any gallstones. They just took my whole gallbladder out. I've had open gallbladder surgery. They wasn't able to do that little laparoscopic thing. They had to y'all are giggling, but you know what I'm talking about. There are just people out there, they find the negative in everything, and they find fault in everything. But here's what I'm going to tell you. There is enough negative going around, and there's enough of the bad stuff going around that we don't need any more of that. You know what we need? God is my fortress. He's my deliverer. He's my shield. He's the horn of my salvation. He's the captain of my salvation. I don't know about you tonight, but I need everything that God is and I need that everything every promise in the book I need to apply it to my life because I want to make it I want to make it regardless of your habits regardless of your restrictions 
regardless of your past lifestyle, regardless of your current lifestyle, regardless of your fears, regardless of your defeated mentality, if you want to live a victorious life, my God is trying to get you to understand that all you've got to do is rely on this word and rely upon his promises. You know what David said? For by thee, I have run through a troop, and for by my God have I leaped over a wall. For years I quoted that wrong. For years I quoted that as, for by thee I can run through a troop, and for by my God I can leap over a wall. That's not what the Word says at all. It doesn't say can, it says have. And I'm not going to argue with anybody here today about words, but the difference in can is that I've got the ability, but the word have means I've already done it at least once. For by my God, I have run through a troop and for by my God I have leaped over a wall Amen. if you want to be defeated go ahead on and be defeated but I'm talking about a God that will do the miraculous for you so y'all are being nice to me tonight this little thought that I had on the way up here the 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 title of my sermon is a little bit confusing. The title of my sermon is A God Who Will Prevent Me. Now on a good day, I can prevent you from coming up on this platform. Physically, I can stop you. Y'all don't know this, but I got a gun. Y'all don't know this, but I got a knife. Y'all don't know this, but I got belts in Taekwondo. Not that I can't kick you tonight, but you give me a little, you, you let me heal up and I can't. There's things I can prevent you from doing. But when I preach to you a God who will prevent me, God's not going to prevent you from being a sinner if that's what you want. God's not going to prevent you from being defeated if that's the attitude you have. So my, 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 my sermon, my title is a little confusing about a God who will prevent me. Prevent me from what? Well, the Lord prevents me from fighting hell alone. He prevents me from being powerless. He prevents me from being defeated. But that's not what I want to preach to you about. This chapter in Psalms is in relation to the words of David as Saul has sent his assassins after him. Now, you've, you've got to understand that David was accustomed to living in royalty. Not too, not too many days from here, David was in the private bedchamber of Saul playing the harp and while he would play the harp, that old evil spirit that was on him would be lifted. When David quit playing the harp, you know what happened? That spirit came back, that bad spirit came back on him. David was living in the palace. He was eating royal food. He had found the favor of Saul, of King Saul. But now Saul has sent his assassins after David. Now, David is living in a cave called Adullam. I don't know, I don't know if anybody here, y'all don't live that far from Mammoth Cave. Anybody ever been to Mammoth Cave? Yeah. Tony's not going back to Mammoth Cave. No. It, it, yeah, it's a big hole in the ground. And they, they said, we got it, they got us in a great big room. And they said, hold on to your neighbor. We're going to turn the lights out. Well, I'm a grown man. I ain't afraid of the dark. I ain't holding on to nobody until they turn the light out. And then me and that lady that she didn't know me and I didn't know her, but we got acquainted real quick. And she was just as happy to see me as I was to see her. They got to one place and they said, we're going to, we're going to crawl through this hole in the wall. 
Y'all been there, haven't you? I got down on my hands and knees, and the problem is, is that the hole was about the same size as me. And I got, you have been there. I got about halfway in there, and all of a sudden, I didn't get stuck, but I'm just telling you, it was tight. I told the Lord, if you will get me out of this God-forsaken place, I will never, ever come back. He did, and I haven't. David is living in the cave of Adullam. All of the king's palace uh, blessings are gone. There's no one bringing him fruit. There's no one bringing him food. There's no one tucking him into the bed. You know what's happening? There's assassins that's on his trail, and they're looking for him. Saul's already thrown the javelin at him twice and missed him both times. But now the king of Israel has sent out and has commissioned assassins to come and to take David's life. And David is living in a moldy, nasty cave called Adullam. And notice David's words that I read for you in the beginning. Because of the Lord's strength and because of his defense, I'm going to wait on him. And then that 10th verse that I, I'm, I'm still trying to get to it, and this is going a lot longer than what I thought it would, but, but he, he wrote, the God of my mercy shall prevent me. Now, I was studying the other day in my office, and I got confused. That's not hard to do. Look, y'all, I fell down a flight of steps, and I hit my head. It's not hard to confuse me. But I, I, I got a little confused that the God of my mercy will prevent me. I know he's a God of strength. I know that he's my defense. But in reading these words, I simply couldn't put together what David was trying to say. According to the Webster's Dictionary, the word prevent means to stop or to hinder. Well, my God's not going to stop me, and he's not going to hinder me. I mean, David said, the God of my mercy shall stop me. The God of my mercy shall hinder me. That may, that may make sense to y'all, but it doesn't make any sense to me. I found it hard to read that the God of my mercy was going to stop me from worshiping him or the God of my mercy or my defense was going to hinder me. It just didn't make sense. While reading these, while looking at this, I went to the scriptures and I found that the word prevent is only found in the entire Bible seven times. And it just doesn't make sense. I read Psalms 79 and 8. Oh, remember not uh, against us former iniquities. Let thy tender mercies speedily prevent us. Y'all, that doesn't make any sense. Let thy, let thy tender mercies speedily stop us or hinder us. So everywhere that I looked, I just couldn't find what I want, what I was trying to find. And um, now it, it, he wrote in that one place um, about his morning prayers. And he talked about how uh, that, 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 that the Lord would hinder him in his morning prayers. Well, if that's the case, I'm not going to be praying morning prayers. I, I don't want to be hindered in, in my morning prayers. But believe it or not, folks, I found it in the Webster's Unabridged Dictionary. Do you understand my dictionary in my office? It's about that tall. It's about that thick. It's about that wide. But then over in the corner on my, on my shelf, I'll send you a picture. I've got what they call a unabridged dictionary. And that is two books. Not one. That's two books. That's about like that. And it's about that tall. And it's about that big. And I found 
that there's a big difference in the dictionary that doesn't have a bridge in it. I got out the unabridged dictionary and I looked up the word prevent. And it's and, and it said to stop or to hinder. But how many know sometimes a dictionary or a word in the dictionary has got more than one meaning? So I got the reading, and here's what I found. I found that in the Webster's Unabridged Dictionary, it reads like this, to, to hinder, to stop, and it also means to come towards. I didn't know that. But I also know that that brings me to a whole new line of thought because I'm going to read it for you again, and I'm not going to change the word. I'm just going to put a definition in there. Because of his strength will I wait upon thee, for God is my defense. The God of my mercy shall prevent me, or the God of my mercy shall come towards me. That makes sense to me. Y'all all, all of y'all ought to be running. I don't know how it is in Bedford, and some of y'all may not live in Bedford. I don't know how it is in Indiana, but I'm going to tell you, in Kentucky, there's some bad days. In Kentucky, there are some difficult days. And I'm going to tell you this, and I'm talking about me, and, and when you start talking about yourself, when you start blowing your own horn, you know what you do? You usually blow it too long and too loud. But I'm just going to tell you this. I'm not lazy. I'm not a lazy person. I'm not afraid to swing the bat. I'm not afraid to make a decision and live by that decision. I'm not afraid of that. But what do you do when you don't know what to do? What do you do when the situation is out of your control? What do you do when you don't know what path or what direction to take? And maybe this will be foreign to you, but what do you do when you don't even know how to pray? You don't know what to... Y'all y'all are looking at me like I've lost my mind. There are days that I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to ask for because I don't know what the, uh, I, I don't know what the end result needs to be. I'm not afraid of working. I'm not afraid of praying. I'm not afraid of any of that. But there's days when I feel like, and maybe maybe you'll know what I'm talking about, but there are days that I feel like my prayers go about three foot in the air and then they come crashing back down on top of me. Not so long ago, and forgive me for referring to this, but not so long ago, my wife and I had had a, had had a really bad day and we had had a really 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 bad week and and it all came down to a, a really bad day that happened to be on a Wednesday you see there's folks in Kentucky that would have just stayed home now I know y'all wouldn't be just cause you had a bad day that's not gonna keep you home just cause y'all had a bad day what y'all gonna do y'all gonna come to the house of God right okay you're on camera pastors watching maybe we had had a bad day and, and i went to the prayer room before wednesday night bible study and 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 i i, I don't want to appear weak i don't want to to appear as as, as someone that is wishy-washy but i'm telling you my heart was broke my heart was broke i wanted to pray but there wasn't anything there was nothing there but tears my wife was in the same position we were literally laying on the prayer room floor and there was there was just no words there there was nothing that would come out tears was streaming down our face and, and we didn't know what to say or what to do or how to pray the only thing that would get out of my mouth the only thing that I could come up with was 
just a little bit of help, Lord. We just need a little bit of help. Oh, God, just a little bit of help. I, I didn't do the henceforth, and I, do, I didn't say any four with all them big King James prayers. All I was doing was just begging God for a little bit of help. Would you just, would you just send a little bit of help? I couldn't pray any particular prayer. I couldn't say any particular thing. I didn't feel like worshiping. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even want to be there. I wanted me and mama to get in the truck and drive somewhere out in the middle of the woods somewhere and me and her hold hands and walk through the woods and boo-hoo and cry. I didn't want everybody to see swelled up faces. I didn't want everybody to see the tears. Amen. But, 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 but I, mean, I, I was not going to leave the church. So we went to church and, and this almost, this almost has to be the right sermon for tonight maybe not for all of you but for somebody because we went to church that night bible study y'all i don't know how y'all do bible study we we we, we start at seven o'clock and it's over by eight we've got folks in our church that gets up at 3 30 in the morning to go to work we've got other folks that gets up or they don't i don't know what time they get up but they have to be at work at five in the morning so we start at seven. We we normally we don't even have a song. I've got a little podium down there, and I teach some kind of little Bible study, trying to give them everybody a little shot in the arm. But for whatever reason, on this Bible study night, they came up and they started singing that song. I don't know what you came to do. Did y'all notice? Y'all sung that a little bit tonight. I don't know what you come to do. I came to sing and shout. I keep singing. Y'all be wanting me to come back one night and lead song service. Sure as the world. I'll see you out behind the building just as soon as church is over. I mean, wheelchair or not, you and I are going to have a talk. I ain't done with you yet. They started singing that old song that, that hardly nobody sings anymore. Or at our church, we hardly ever sing it. I didn't want to sing, y'all. I didn't. I've already told you I didn't even want to be there because I was lying. I had a smile on my face and swelled up, swelled up eyes. I was telling everybody everything's good, and it wasn't true. My heart was in a million. Well, not a million. My heart was in pieces. They started singing that song. I don't know what you come to do, but I came to praise the Lord. You know what? That's what we're here for. Now, let me show you what happened. I was in such a dither. I was in such a bad shape, if you'll allow me to say it this way, my problems, my mind, my heart wouldn't allow me to get to God. I couldn't feel those goosebumps. You know what I'm talking about, them goosebumps? I couldn't feel that thing that starts, you know, right up in here somewhere and shoots down your back, and it gets down so far and it makes a U-turn and comes right back up. I couldn't feel all of that. I couldn't get in the air conditioning duct. Y'all need two more right here, right now. I couldn't get in the air conditioning duct and get a little chill. It wasn't there. But when I couldn't get to God, you know what God said? I'm going to prevent you. I'm going to prevent you. Well, what do you mean? I'm, when you can't get to me, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come to you. When you're not able to feel me, don't you worry. I'm going to stop what I'm doing, and I'm going to come and get to you. I'm going to prevent you. Amen. I'm just, I, I want you to know today that on those moments in, those, in that time that you feel like your prayers is going up and coming back down, you know what God's going to do? He's 
going to prevent you. He's going to come towards you. He's not going to stop you. He's not going to hinder you, but he's going to come towards you. He's going to get to you, and the miraculous is going to happen. I've got an associate pastor there at Greater Life Madisonville. He's a good guy. I hope he's not watching. He's probably not. He came to the church the other night. He came to my office. He came walking in, didn't knock. Very unlike him. Just walked into my office. And I didn't, I've, 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 got a, I've got a master's degree in counseling. I didn't need that master's degree to tell me something was wrong. All I had to do was look at him. And I told him, I said, uh, I went over to him. And I put my hand on him, on his shoulder. And I said, brother, I'm going to pray. Didn't know what I was praying about. Had no clue. I prayed for him. I went back over and sat down. And he said, Pastor, I got something to tell you. Now, there's not a pastor in this world that wants to hear those words come out of a saint's mouth. He said, I got something to tell you. He said, I just came from the doctor. And without going through the whole story, the doctor said, it's either bad or really. This is not going to come out in your favor. It's either bad or it's really bad. What am I going to do with that? I, I, I can argue what the doctor says only based upon the word. I just said, well, we need to pray. And he said, well, would you wait until church starts? Sure. Church started. And, and I don't know, they were singing, the worship team was singing or whatever they were, you know, whatever song they were singing. And I just stopped them. And I said, look, this, this, this temple, this sanctuary, this church is a place that we come when there's trouble. We also come when everything's great. But, 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 but we've got a need here tonight. And I didn't go into all the story, but I did say that the doctor has told Brother Tate it's either bad or it's really bad. Now, maybe you've never had those words spoke to you by a doctor. But he came up. Listen, he, he's a great guy. He's qualified to preach in any pulpit that, that, that I know of. But on that night, he was broken. On that night, he saw a lot of bad potential in front of him. And I, I leaned up in his ear and I said, don't you say a word. Don't you pray one word. We're going to pray for you. We're going to put you on our shoulders and we're going to carry you through this. Now, I got to tell you. The Lord's hand didn't come down through the ceiling. And there wasn't any kind of like tongues and interpretations. All I can tell you, though, is that the atmosphere was conducive for a miracle. But when we left there, we didn't, we didn't have a clue. We didn't have, no, we didn't have any idea of what was going on. And he had to go... The situation in his body was so bad that he had to go the next day for a particular test. Now, when's the last time that you tried to get into a doctor and the doctor didn't say, okay, August? They made room for him for that very next day because they saw the doctor saw something that was bad or really bad. They did some x-rays and... For what should have been light was black. Wasn't dark, it was black. So it was either bad or really bad. And so he goes for that test, and they do whatever the test was, and the doctor comes in and says, What's happened to you? 
Well, I don't know. You're the one that said it was bad or really bad. So you tell me what happened to me. I, I don't know. I don't understand it all. He said, look, this is the x-ray that we took yesterday. And before we could do the test, we had to do another x-ray to know where to you know, shine right in, where to go. He said, this is yesterday's x-ray, and this is today's x-ray. This one over here was black, and this one over here was light and was showing everything that needed to be shown. Now, that might not excite you, but it sure excited Brother Tate. You know what? When Brother Tate came to service that night and was unable to, to pray, was unable to get to God, you know what God said? Brother Tate, you just stand still because I'm going to come to you. I, you don't, don't you worry about getting to me. Don't you worry about breaking through because in this circumstance, in this situation, I'm going to come to you. I don't know how you feel tonight, but I'm glad that I've got a God that is strong enough and is powerful enough and is great enough that he can get through every obstacle. He can get through every difficult circumstance. When I can't get to him, he's going to prevent me. He's going to come to me. Stand with me if you would. Man, this has got to be a world record for me. 35 minutes. Lord, I hope nobody at home is watching this tonight. You're not getting this at home. <laughs> yeah, boy, I'm in trouble tonight. Satan's desire is to sift you as wheat. His desire, let me just, let me just break this down for you. His desire, if you give him your wheat, he's going to come back wanting your corn. And after you give him your corn, he's going to come back and want your soybeans. And if Satan has his way, he's going to leave you desperate. He's going to leave you in a place where you can't get to God. I'm not lambasting anyone. I'm not being difficult to anyone. I'm not being, I'm not, I'm not being rude or crude. An associate pastor can't be rude or crude to his, to his flock, right? I'm not being mean, all that. But here's what I'm telling you. There's going to be a day, if there hasn't already been a day, that Satan has taken your wheat. He's took your corn. He's took your soybeans. Do y'all know what Milo is? Okay, I'll leave that note. He's going to take everything that you got. He's, go he, he's going to take everything that you have and leave you destitute. If you think you haven't been there before, well, God bless you. That's all I'm saying. But on that day, when there's not even a hand wave, on that day when you can't even get an amen out, on that day when everybody else is worshiping the Lord and you're sitting over in the corner crying, I want you to remember that God wants to prevent you. Oh, He doesn't want to prevent you from worship. He doesn't want to prevent you from magnifying His name. He just wants to come towards you. And when He gets there, He'll be a God who will prevent you. He'll get, he'll get close to you. The other night, when I did my little hula hoop down the stairs, I've never seen my wife move that fast in all of her life. She was on the phone. She said she was on the phone to call my daughter. I hope that's true. Lord, I hope she wasn't on the phone calling the life insurance agent. She got to me. Brother and Sister Weir got to me. I'm, I mean... I'm certified in a lot of things. And I know from my training that I'm supposed to lay there or make you lay there and let's do an inventory on what's hurting, what's not hurting. Are you hurt bad? 
Or do you think you might be able to get up? So I'm laying there kind of, well, my knee's hurting and my head's hurting. And, but, I, I mean, it's not like I'm in excruciating pain. And those that were around me didn't really know how to pray. They didn't know. My wife said, I was afraid your neck was broke. No, baby, you was hoping my neck was broke. See, I can say what I want to because I know she's at work. She's a nurse, and I know she's at work. I can say anything I want to because she's not watching tonight. Yeah, that is good. You're right. That is good. Have you ever been in that place where you didn't know what to pray for? You didn't know how to pray. Am I going to pray that he gets up, or am I going to pray that God puts his bones back together? How, how am I supposed to pray? In that moment, laying, uh, I was laying upside down, I guess. I'm glad that God prevented me. Why didn't He prevent you from falling down the steps? Because I'm clumsy, that's why. He could have stopped that. All I know is this. When I needed Him, and boy, there, wasn't no, there wasn't a light down there. I told Brother Weir later, I said, aren't you, aren't you supposed to see a bright light if you're dying? All I saw was darkness. It kind of scared me. Y'all probably don't know what scared is. But it kind of scared me. All I know is, is that the Lord, we, my wife counted them, the Lord prevented me down those 12 steps. And He came down there to where I was at and see, when He gets to you, He's got the ability to do the work. You don't know what to say. You don't know what to pray. You don't know what to do. But God says, not only will I prevent you, not only will I come to you, but I'll deliver you. Years ago, there was a sermon that went around the apostolic ranks about the miracles looking for a vessel. Vessel. Brother Jeff Arnold preached that years ago. I had a friend of mine that came to our church and he preached it this way. The provisions of the provider are always greater than the need. There's not a need that you're facing. I don't care if your heart is in 42 different pieces. My God's able to put it all back together. I talked to a man on the way here today that's troubled about a situation in his life. And his question to me was, why are we going through this? Let me tell you something. If you've got to have an answer to why, you're going to be miserable the rest of your life because there's not always an answer. But I told him about my 1991. My, 1991 was a horrible year for us. 1991 was a difficult time. But it was also the most educational time I went through things in 1991 that now I can help other folks go through you may think you understand what somebody's going through but until you've been through it you just think you know you may have a desire to help someone but until you have felt their pain and until you have felt the, uh, that that hopelessness you really can't understand but my God can because He's qualified to help us today. These altars are open just for a few moments of time. I don't know if any of this has made sense to you. I do know that I feel good about it. I know that I, that I feel good about it. All them little jagged notes is going to be all right. There's a God tonight that if you can't get to Him, He will prevent you. He won't stop you. He won't hinder you. He'll just come to you. These altars are open. Come, take your liberty in the Lord. If nothing else, just be thankful. Thank you today.
We're going to have Sister Melissa step in for Brother Barnes. We know God can do a work.
How many believes that God's a healer in this house tonight? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the work that you're doing, mighty God. I thank you and I praise you, Lord. I give you glory and honor, Jesus, for everything that you do. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank God he showed up in this house tonight. Thank the Lord that he was able to still spare Brother Frederick from any more pain than he endured and that he was able to make it in this house tonight. Thank you, brother, for such a great word. And uh, hopefully the Lord will prevent us in times when we can't get to him. He can come to us. We're going to be having service Wednesday night. And it's going to be with Brother Weir. Uh, and a uh, prayer meeting Monday night, this tomorrow night. So anybody that can be here, be here, please. Um, and uh, we just hope you have a good, safe night. Thank you all for coming. God bless you.